1929 is a big year for cosmology, the study of the universe as a whole. 1929, two things happen. Lemaitre takes Einstein's equations and predicts that, okay, if the universe really is expanding in the way that would be allowed by Einstein's equations, then the speed of a galaxy should be proportional to its distance. If you're twice as far away, you should be moving twice as fast. And in America, Edwin Hubble discovers this without hearing anything about Lemaitre. He's just out there studying galaxies. He's measuring their velocities by redshifts. He finds that for a galaxy that's twice as far away, it's twice as redshifted. So the expansion of the universe of the universe is two things predicted predicted by Georges Lemaitre and discovered measured by the American astronomer by Ed Hubble. So that's amazing. Now we got cool stuff going on there. And then a few years after that, 1933, 34, then, you know, 1930s, Lemaitre finally takes things to the next step. And he really, he, he continues the logic. Lemaitre so first of all, everybody's amazed at like, wow, okay, Lemaitre predicted mathematically exactly how the velocity of a galaxy should be related to its distance. Ed Hubble measures it without even knowing about Lemaitre stuff, and it's right. It's true. The galaxies in our universe really are moving away from each other in the exact mathematical pattern predicted by Lemaitre based on this idea of the expanded universe. And Lemaitre formulates what we now call the Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. And, and, and I mean, you know, okay, so it's based on this evidence of the expansion of the universe. Well, okay, what, what does that mean? It means that right now the galaxies are, you know, I pick some distant galaxy and it's this, this moving away from us at this speed. Well, it means tomorrow it's going to be a little farther away from us. And that all galaxies are getting farther and farther and farther away from each, us into the future. And if I look into the past, well, it means last week all the galaxies of the universe were a little closer together. And a year ago they were even closer together than that. And a hundred years ago, and a thousand years ago, and a million years ago, and a billion years ago, and well, there's a limit to how close the galaxies can get, you know? You, if, if all the galaxies are moving away from each other into the future, and there's no other forces messing with things, then as I look into the past, well, then they must get closer and closer and closer and closer together, but there's a limit to how close you can get. There's a certain point based on Hubble's constant, you know, 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, the relationship between velocity and distance, that's a certain farther you can go into the past before all the galaxies in the universe are together in the same place at the same time. And we can calculate when that took place. Based on modern measurements, better than the stuff Lemaitre had available, we can then calculate that all the galaxies in the universe must have had zero distance away from each other at a point 13.7 billion years ago. 13.7 billion years ago. That all the galaxies in the entire universe are together in one place at one time. And Lemaitre uses the Einstein equations, and the Einstein equations say that time travels at different speeds depending on the gravity around there. If there's lots of gravity, if you're in a place with strong gravity, time travels more slowly. And if you're out in space with weak gravity, then time travels a little bit faster. And so the main calculates, well, as all the galaxies are coming together in a denser and denser and denser universe, then time would slow down more and more and more. And so you would get an instant where time would stop where there would be a point of beginning, an instant at which the universe came into existence, before which there was no time, and then from that time then kickstarts forward and initially goes forward slower and then kind of starts going from there. And so asking from, from this sort of a perspective, if Lemaitre's equations, a version of the Einstein equations is right, then asking what happened before the Big Bang is like asking what happens on the Earth 10 miles north of the North Pole. Well. There's no point on the Earth that's 10 miles north of the North Pole. That doesn't, point doesn't exist on the Earth. Similarly, asking what happened before the Big Bang, well, there was no time before the Big Bang. Asking what happened 10 minutes before the Big Bang doesn't make any sense if Lemaitre's interpretation and his equations are correct. You know, people are still kicking around some of these ideas. We do not have all the details of this worked out. But Lemaitre continues this forward and proposes, no, there was a beginning, a point at which our universe came into existence, a point where time itself began. Einstein himself, when he first heard this, he was like, well, dude's a priest, you know? The guy's like, well, of course he's all this, you know, let there be light and all that kind of jazz. Einstein kind of dismissed it initially. 
And this is the beauty of science. You know, it doesn't matter where your ideas come from or how they interconnect with other things. The matter is, are they right? Reality is out there. The universe exists. It doesn't care what we think about it. The question is, how well do our observations, how well do our, you know, what measurements we can make of the universe, how well do they match up with the predictions of theory? So we got to talk about this. So we've finally got to the point where Lemaitre has he actually did not. Uh, the term, the Big Bang Theory, is not Lemaitre. He, he called this the theory of the primeval atom, which really didn't go that far for obvious reasons. So, the Big Bang Theory. What does it say? What does it mean? What, what, what does the Big Bang Theory say? Well, okay. Um, first of all, it's, the, the, the equation, you know, it's a set of equations. Let's, let's be clear about this. A set of equations. So I can describe it in words, but you know, that's you know, it's kind of hard to do, you know, that's so it's all I'll do my best. According to the Big Bang equations, there was a point there was a beginning, a point at which our universe began. There was so our universe began at an instant. At that point of beginning, all of space everywhere, however much that is, and we have no idea how much that is, all of space everywhere was equally filled with hot, dense energy under high pressure. Our universe began at an instant. At this time, time zero, all of space everywhere was filled with hot, dense energy under high pressure, under high pressure. Okay. Usually, if you're watching like, you know, something on the Discovery Channel about the Big Bang, you know, they're talking about the Big Bang, what do they do? They make the screen black. They put this bright spot in the middle and the bright spot explodes out there. They make it like in a normal explosion. That's not what the Big Bang equations say. The Big Bang equations say the Big Bang filled every single point in the entire universe. There was no point in the universe which was not filled in the Big Bang. It was not some thing that then, you know, that, that I mean, shoot, even Lemaitre's term, primeval atom, makes me think I got an atom, it's surrounded by empty space, the atom explodes, and then it goes out into the empty space, and so where did the Big Bang take place? Well, it took place. No, 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 that's not what it says. The Big Bang equations say that initially, at time zero, the instant of beginning, all of space everywhere is filled with hot, dense energy under high pressure. There is no point anywhere which is not filled with the fires of the Big Bang. Fires metaphorically, not real chemical fire, but hot, you know. So here's what's going on. That's, and then this pressure then causes space itself to stretch out and expand. If the universe is infinitely big, then it was still infinitely big at the time of the Big Bang. And this infinitely universe, big universe was, you know, filled with infinite... Uh, yeah, I don't... I can't visualize infinity. Whatever. The universe is filled equally everywhere with hot, dense energy under high pressure. The pressure of this causes space to stretch and expand. And so what happens is then the density of stuff, the amount of stuff in every cubic foot of the universe goes down because space space is stretching out behind within this and then you know the stuff the the matter and energy and all that stuff well now there's less of that per cubic foot because each cubic foot's getting bigger and so it stretches out and as a result temperature begins to drop and so the temperature drops you know initially it's you know it's huge and then it drops over time and the density drops and then eventually things get cooler and cooler and cooler and eventually it gets so cool that atoms can form and then pretty then pretty soon space is pretty much empty and then gravity starts pulling together clumps of matter and making stars and yada 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 here I am you know that's that's kind of the idea here so this starts getting kicked around in the 1930s initially most astronomers hate it it's a dreadful idea most astronomers first of all it's considered to be kind of a fringe idea how can you know whether the Big Bang took place you know billions of years ago nobody was there this is not science this is kind of like a little out there philosophy and besides all the philosophers know it's wrong anyway there were other ideas that were proposed um, the great astronomer Fred Hoyle Fred Hoyle, you know, he, he sees this expansion of the universe thing, so that, so the expansion of the universe is evidence for the Big Bang Theory, but Fred Hoyle looks at this and says, no, 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 that's that, the universe is infinitely old, he says, no, all galaxies are moving away from each other, and let's say that new galaxies appear in the empty spaces between things, and they ask him, well, Fred, where did the new galaxies come from? He's like, well, where did the Big Bang come from? He was British. And so, you know, so this is no more silly than that idea. And he was actually, so he, he proposed what was called the steady 
state model. The universe is infinitely old, new creation takes place in the voids between galaxies. He was the one who came up with the term the Big Bang Theory. He's on the radio making fun of it. And he's like, oh, well, this Lemay thinks the universe just sort of began with some sort of Big Bang. <laughs> and he's all like ridiculing the idea, but the term the Big Bang Theory stuck. So, so other people propose other ideas, people are kicking things around. Lemaitre's Big Bang Ideas is just one of a variety of ideas being kicked around. And most scientists think we're never going to know. How could we ever know this in a real, serious, scientific way? It's kind of interesting, kind of philosophical. Who knows until something really cool happens. i got to tell you about George Gamow. George G-A-M-O-U. George Gamov, he was Russian, um, but he came to the United States because the 20th century was a much more pleasant thing to experience in the United States than in Russia. So he comes over, great, wonderful, he's over at the University of Colorado, where I did my graduate work, we got a tower named after him down there, it's kind of cool. Um, so George Gamov, and he's, uh, he's kicking around this idea, he's, okay, if this is right, let's think about this. Can we make a specific testable prediction based on this? If this is true, the universe starts off hot and dense. Universe starts off hot and dense. Hot, dense things glow. They give off light. Therefore, it must have been glowing. And then, over time, the universe's density will, you know, it'll expand, and so the universe gets thinner and thinner, density goes down, space stretches out, and so it cools. And finally, it cools enough that individual electrons get to stuck to individual protons, and you got atoms. And then, okay, so when it's really hot and dense, it's glowing, but opaque. Opaque. Opaque meaning light can't go through it. You know, it's a wall. You can't see through it. And then, and it's all glowing, but the light can't get very far. And then there's a certain point at which the universe, or atoms would form, and then the universe would be transparent. After a while, the universe goes transparent. I mean, and the universe today is mostly transparent, aside from a few stars and galaxies here and there, it's mostly empty space. You can see through the universe. And George Gamow says, aha, the universe was hot and glowing and dense and opaque, and then it goes transparent and stops glowing. And so that glow that it, from the early universe should still be out there. That glow from the universe, so you know, today we can calculate exactly when the universe would have done this. If the Big Bang equations are right, basically the universe is a couple hundred thousand years old. A couple hundred, th no, a couple hundred thousand years sounds like a long time to you and me, but you know, in a universe that's 14 billion years old, hey, what's well, a couple hundred thousand years between friends? So, when the universe is a couple hundred thousand years old, atoms form, and then the glow from before that should still be out there, now filling this transparent universe. So, after a while, it becomes transparent, you know, it's about 300 thousand years and the glow should still be there it should still exist this glow from the hot dense universe should still be out there should still exist he does some calculations some other collaborators some other people kick this idea around the universe should have a temperature there should be a glow out there this glow what is this glow this glow is the afterglow of the big bang itself light given off by every point in the whole universe when it was all hot and dense and it was still out there and then the universe goes transparent and the glow should still every point you look in the sky the sky should be glowing and so different people do some calculations and what should it be and it's oh it should be really cold by now and then the expansion of the universe ever since then for the last 14 billion years should have stretched it out even more it should be very cold but there should be a cool glow filling the universe since it's really cool um it shouldn't be in the visible it should be way down in the microwave radio thing a glow should a glow from the big bang should fill the universe the initial calculations are kind of rough then they get more and more specific somewhere around three kelvins really super super cold this would put a glow the glow should be in the microwaves microwaves down in the radio kind of part of the em spectrum radio part of the electromagnetic spectrum there should be a glow which should still if the big bang is right a specific testable prediction if the big bang is right there should be a glow filling the whole sky with microwaves 